The first church that I attended was the Waterman Boulevard Home Church, also known as Medea's House, where our pastor was, the pastor Christopher Rogers. I was a part member. It is so funny, he had Dana and uh, my nephew Demetrius, can be Kristen, they all had, well, he had a little church. He was the pastor. Uh, Demetrius was the deacon. Dana and him sang in the choir, and he would line them up on the steps in my mother's house. And so they would have church. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Yes. That was the first church, because after the congregation had to move away, and so our cousins moved to Omaha, and so then the church moved to the Palestine Missionary Baptist Church cardboard box. Yes, located in downtown St. Louis. That's just, that's the way it was, you know. Um, I've always felt that he was going to preach uh, because he was just different. When he was in preschool, he used to have me put on his colored shirt, you know, it was red shirt, blue shirt, green shirt, yellow shirt. He would, Mama, can I wear this shirt today? Well, what I didn't know was that if he had the right color on, he could be the leader. And he was always trying to be the leader. Mm -hmm. And his teacher told me, she said, Chris can't be the leader every day. But that's, that, that's, that's who he was, and that's who he is. When he was about eight years old, I met Donald McNeil, who pastors Hopewell, and he, at that time, was pastoring in Columbia. He walked up to me and he said, is this your child? And I said, yes. He said, he's anointed. He was eight years old. And when Christopher started preaching later, I went to Donald McNeil and told him, at that time we had developed a relationship and I knew him and I told him about what he told me. And he probably didn't even remember him telling me that, but it was something about him that made him know that, that this child was different. I joke about the cardboard box church and <laughs> joke about, uh, you know, the hymns and learning those, but you know, it's today I can look back and be grateful for those things because I know there are others who, you know, may not have had that experience. So that was unique for me. And, you know, I learned it holy, holy, holy at, <laughs> at eight years old. Like, I didn't really understand <laughs> what that meant. But you know what? I know all the words, to the, all the verses and all the words. And today it has a new meaning for me. His friends were in the church. He left all of that when he was 12 and he went to Light of Jericho. And that's where uh, I really think he got a lot of his, you know, he, he had the potential, but I think he, because it was a small church, uh, he really, and he was with my brother, he really grew. Growing up, I got to see how focused and how determined he can be when he said his mouth to something. You know, so when he did get married, I knew he was gonna be an amazing husband, and he has been. I knew he'd be a great father. And um, as you can probably see, like he is very involved in the lives of his children. To see his family grow up in a Christian way makes me feel good. They love him dearly, and that's because he is always there to support them, to talk to them. Um, so I never expect him to do anything less than than to be successful in that in that respect. As a father, I, I think I think he was a very good father. He was very protective of his girls very protective of them, and I think they appreciate that too. He's always been easy to talk to. Never really judgmental or, you know, like you could always, I could always come to him with anything. Like, I didn't have a question or crying, whatever it was, you know, and to be able to, to get advice and guidance from him. And it always, I will say that always goes back to the word. For me, seeing him as a preacher, I think it's been, for me, it's seeing his growth. You know, because um, I was there when he did his first, you know, speech or, you know, presentation to the church, you know, and, you know, to the youth. I was there for that, you know, so, and then I was there when he did his first initial sermon. And I've been there to see his, his growth. And so to see where he is today is absolutely amazing. To watch him grow up to be the man that he is today, I'm so grateful. I'm so great. Chris, I am so very proud of you. I know that you've done a lot of good work, done a lot of praying, and I still, I'm still saying trust God in all that you do. Stay prayerful 
and the Lord will see it. Christopher, I love you. You know I love you. And whatever you need, God has the answer. Whatever it is that you faith you may taste in life, just pray. God has the answer.